Ay, ay, ay. Welcome back to the garage, baby. Welcome to foster care. Coming to me live with my boy, Michael Thank you Ray. For me, Ryan. Dude, how much work would I have to do in construction before I can hit him with an ay, ay, ay? Ay, ay, ay. You got to put up two walls of sheetrock, two sheets. You can That's hit it. Em. All yeah. right, I'm in, baby. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. <laughs> <laughs> That's too much. Mo- fucking Mexican terrorists would be the best. Yeah. Oh god, my god. Damn. Some hot tamales. Dude, they'd be too easy to overcome because like they just have to like slide open a window and throw in a case of Corona. Yeah. And so, a soccer ball. <laughs> then they're fucking chilling. Cervezas, it's over, dude. Those are my favorite guys on construction sites. They're the best. Dude. They got a. <laughs> they got one of ours like shut down because we were working at this dentist office and in the basement. We came back from the weekend and it stunk. And uh, the Mexican guys were shitting on sheetrock and then putting another piece <laughs> and just throwing it in the corner of the basin. That shit was gnarly, dude. Dude, there's no tougher people. Nobody has more fun and nobody parties harder than Mexican dudes. No. The no. coolest guys on the planet, Dude, man. my cousin Billy right now, he's uh, he went to, he went on vacation and met a senorita. Oh. And he's, uh, dude, he's living down there for like a month. Just uh, tagging that ass. He's not coming back, man. No, I don't think he might. He might not. He's got a court case he's got to fix. But <laughs> <laughs> Here or there? <laughs> Here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there. He'd be fucked. Did you ever have a friend get locked up in another country? Well, I had a friend who went on a cruise to the Caribbean, and he came back, and they took him off the boat in New York. And they brought him to Rikers for a couple of days, and he said dudes were pissing on him, beating the shit out of him. Ah, uh, white guy? Yeah. Tough. Yeah, that's not yeah. the island you want to go to. Yeah. They are not on <laughs> island time there, dude. <laughs> yeah, he was an island boy, man. <laughs> that is fucking tough. I uh, one of my boys, he went down to Mexico. I think he was in Mexico for like uh, somebody's like um, wedding, mm-hmm. and he got in a fight with his girl in the hotel room. And I, he said he had to drink like a beer bottle in his hand and turned around and shattered the glass shower. And the cop, I guess the hotel came and he couldn't like <laughs> fix it. He ended up going oh, to jail for like dude. four days. Had to stay late, get a late flight home. Fucked him, dude. Shower glasses, uh. That's a uh, thick. Not in Mexico. It's, um. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like a hard taco shell, dude. <laughs> Strong breeze, take that bitch down. Dude, that's why you got to ask for soft shell shower. <laughs> soft shell shower. Yeah, woo, baby. That was a t- Coming I almost out. passed out. Yeah, it's I'm just a curtain. <laughs> yeah, dude. I cannot. I um. I don't know, dude. Yeah, Mexicans they they do rock. They're the be- and they like I hate what that was like. All them people they're like they're taking our jobs. I'm like, dude, come to a no. construction site. And like get make it to lunch with these right. motherfuckers. They'll like white guys hang like they can like sheetrock a kitchen in a day. Mexican dudes will blow out like an entire floor of a mansion. Dude, and on top of that too, like when I was younger, I would like help the guy who I just told you about who got busted coming off the cruise ship. I would help him and uh I would do like this manual labor shit and uh I would come across, like, anytime you came across a Mexican dude, yeah. they just put their nose down and they got their work done. But my favorite thing was, like, the way they would try to connect with you. Like, they would try to connect with tit, you. Tit nudes? Yeah. Dude, they would show you the <laughs> most time. horrific porn of, like, a pit bull fucking a fat lady. Dude, that's always their, uh, that's always their that's thing. The, uh, that's they'll, the, they'll uh, the peace you, offering. Yeah. yeah. They'll show you a brown, like, 300-pound chick with dog tits yeah. and be like, check this out. Thank you. I'm like, dude, we, yeah, I don't think I we can. Yeah. <laughs> See. <laughs> See. I uh dude that they're they're always I, I just love that level of horniness. Mm-hmm. All a bunch of heinous I just saw a uh TikTok the other day of some uh, I guess he's like a Spanish TikToker and he showed up to a Home Depot parking lot and took three Mexican dudes to Disneyland for the day. Uh, and dude, it was the most wholesome fucking I was like, I hope he got them hammered. Yeah. Dude, it was great. They all left in like brand new track jackets. Dude. It was magical. That would be a nice thing to do like on a really big scale, like show up in like a fucking a stretch pickup truck. Yeah, and just pick them all up. <laughs> Guess who's going to Key West? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck some milfs. You gotta take, dude. You, t- you take a busload of Mexicans to Thailand. Get a little oh, hooker action man. going. Maron. It's funny you mention that. I was just watching a video that popped up in my algorithm about uh, a. It's like a a Thailand like fucking sex menu where they walk into the brothel. Oh yeah. All the ladies stand up. And uh, I don't know what the Thai version Spread of Mama cheeks. San is, but she's reading off the menu and all the ladies are just presenting themselves. Yeah. It's like, dude, I They're cannot wait. With their pieces tucked. Until my wife dies. So oh, I can yeah, this, dude, that'll be living. I went to Thailand with one of my boys like seven years ago. And um, when you're walking down the street, uh, like I, I always see these videos. Do you ever see the videos of dudes online and they're like, this is how men get treated in Thailand. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, they're hookers. But, <laughs> like, they're not like they're not yeah. cool chicks. Because dude. They, dude, they would just throw they throw change at you and like from the like, handsome man, handsome dude. man. That's how I want to get noticed, man. I don't even care if you're lying to me. Just just fucking throw some change. Nice at me. Me, man. I don't care what it takes, man. <laughs> Catch a change in your pockets. 
Dude, they're the best. There's there were so many. We went to the one island and there was like the guy, the one dude who managed the bar was telling us all these stories of like tourists getting fucked up. Yeah. Cause they start talking shit to these Thai hookers not knowing they're trans. Dude. And then you get the brakes beaten off you from by like a national championship Thai boxer. Dude, that's one of the things that I that I'm thankful for that I get regular pussy from a normal lady now, which is my wife. Yeah. But like <laughs> I had a little hooker phase before I met my wife. And I would always go to either um Washi washi, and I also got a hooker in Mexico, but I never went the route where you pull up on the avenue and yeah. just try to pull them in. But just think about how how awful that would be if you get a hooker in your car and you lose a fist fight to her. Yeah, dude, you get beat up <laughs> in your own car. It's like that Russian MMA you see. On <laughs> yeah. You got fucking put in the rear naked by a Thai hooker. God, you think Thai we, hookers would respect the tap? <laughs> yes, yeah, they're like, no, no, no. There's no ref here, chop. <laughs> you tap and I get out of the car. <laughs> I just watched a video. I, did you ever watch American Crime, the documentary? I don't know. I feel like you would personally love it because it's just they followed these guys for like 20 years in uh, Newark. Okay. And uh, there's like a part where like the guy's one, his wife becomes a prostitute. And Speaking she's my getting, language. <laughs> yeah, dude. It, it's just like there's so many like riffs. That, like there's so many like little clips. The documentary ends with the guy literally he's passed out on heroin on a pile of like rocks. Oh, dude. <laughs> like, it's tough. I would love that. I um, <laughs> to sleep well, on the one of like, dude, well, no, well, I was thinking Newark because like one of my like worst, worst fucking uh, you know degenerate horror stories originated in Newark. I went there for a Flyers playoff game, and I went there with a coworker, and I just thought he was a regular dude. Yeah. And I mentioned Coke, and he and we you get made that, that you get yeah. that nod to each other. <laughs> it's like that look you get when like you and another scumbag recognize a yeah. midget. And it's yeah. like, you you see this too, yeah, right? My appetite's crushed, right? Dude, <laughs> I did so much fucking coke that day. And I did so much coke inside the arena that I thought about calling my mom. I was like, she oh will God. respect the fact that I'm calling her and being honest with her that I need her to come pick How me old up in Newark. <laughs> like 35. <laughs> Mama. So, yeah, yeah, this yeah, was life alert. Yeah. Like, I'm about to hit this yeah. shit. Dude, it was, uh, I think it was 2012. Oh. <sighs> But that Damn. was that was a fucking rough one. But like, New York was my kind of town. Yeah. I was literally thirteen. <laughs> what when you did coke in two thousand twelve? Yeah, when I called my mom. I just yeah, I was twenty three. I was a yeah, I had a fucking man bun in two thousand twelve, dude. Oh right, powerful man bun. <laughs> what made you get rid of that? <laughs> I don't know because I was getting pussy. I was crushing. Yeah. But uh, I don't, I think I just got to one point where it's a lot of maintenance. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I was doing like jujitsu and shit at the time. She would just come out with like a fucking knot on the side of your head and have to comb it out. You don't really feel like a man. <laughs> like spats and you're like, dude, my hair. I got to put a detangler in my hair. Yeah. That was tough. But Coke at a, Coke at a big event is underrated. It was, you know, dude. And it was. Uh, what did the lights get you? Or just that, the intensity? That was a big and part then of it. like everyone knows. Because before they, they dropped the puck. The devil's colors are red and black, and the entire arena goes red. Uh, and at that point, dude, and I was by myself, too. I bought a single ticket, and I was two rows from the ice. So, like, <laughs> people are screaming at me, and I got the red light coming on. And I'm thinking, like, <laughs> I don't know if I can do this. Like, I spent a lot of money to get here. I'm not sure that I can do this. So I made it through the first period, and then I went up in the concourse, and uh, I didn't have any more coke on me because my buddies were sitting in the upper deck. Uh, and I you got to get them to drop. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Come on, know, can you hot dog gun me some yeah. coke, dude? How would you get it through security? <laughs> Oh, they, they don't They'll check. never check. They, they don't, don't check that shit? Not for Coke. Yeah. Nice. You know how much Coke's in any arena you've ever been in? <laughs> for sure. <laughs> My God. Yeah, that rocks, though. Did you make, you made it home by yourself? You I did, it? yeah. When I got when I came back out, they still had some more, so I was able to do it on the way home. Oh. But like, I was always one of those guys that I always wanted more. Oh, yeah. Well, that's Coke. I knew it was time <laughs> to go home. Like There were guys where I know, like my buddy Steve worked with a guy who he said it was the most insane thing. A guy would do one bump. He would take a, uh, he had a gram in his uh, little toolbox. After work on Fridays, he would take it out. He would do a line and he would put it away till next week. And like that kind of shit was insane. That to me. blows my mind, dude. I Coke could goes, never do that. Coke doesn't end until you're like scraping the bag. <laughs> like yeah. You got the bag inside out. It's like you have to be in some weirdo who See you don't kind know. Of feet that go by this garage. Yeah, that is a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah this is this is a pervert's paradise. <laughs> yeah, All we have That's is a, like the garage door open so that you could just see feet coming dude, by. It's unbelievable. We considered keep, putting a camera yeah, there. I was going to put a camera. That's happening. a Patreon level. Tootsie cam. Yeah. Have cupsy out here, fucking rating shoes. We have like a whole like fan of like foot fetish people. Oh, yeah. dude, I don't. Are you not a foot guy, right? I like my wife's feet. Yeah. Well, I'm not like I've had a foot like thrown in my mouth, but I'm not like That's guys who are like yeah yeah. yeah. I, I thought she was Asian. Have a, like Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's long. across the room. Yeah. She roundhouse me. And I <laughs> caught that motherfucker. I have a friend I haven't seen in like three years, and I saw him this weekend, and he was telling me how his girlfriend like jerks off his dick with it with her feet. 
Oh, oh, man. Yeah, and he likes, he loves it. And he likes, he said this specifically. He said he licks the cum off her toes. Ah, dude. Whoa. He yeah. does it. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> no, dude. He's literally, I've known him my whole life. That's a slippery slope to Habits. licking your cum, dude. Would, yeah, I would watch <laughs> out. Yeah, just that. hanging out with him. It's contagious. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man. You can catch that. Yeah, I think unless my wife was like, my left foot, like, confined to a wheelbarrow. <laughs> I don't think I'd be into that. Yeah, I need a dead foot, <laughs> a little foot, long foot situation. <laughs> I'm of course worrying if the feet are clean at least, uh, like not even the jizz licking. But yeah, she he was like, I don't care if they're clean or dirty. Some guys like them dirty. I was like, wow. If it, yeah, if I'm if I like feet, it's because they're dirty. Yeah, <laughs> go have her walk around in the garden. <laughs> yeah, because it's always it's always attached to the kind of woman that I like. Like a dirty foot is never attached. To like a nine to five woman who's successful yeah. in business, it's always attached to a bitch that has a wet bun and kids that she got taken yeah, away from. Just over shift to like Wendy's. Mm. <laughs> That's kind of chick went to ride her, <laughs> ride her boyfriend's pegs to work. <laughs> That's the kind of fucking feet you want, dude. Yeah, yeah. I never got into. I, I was never a foot guy. I'm I straight for the holes, dude. But yeah, same. Puss. <laughs> I, I don't even like butthole, man. My, I you know the butthole guy. Yeah, I stuck it in my wife's butt like once early on in our relationship, and it was just like. Okay. There's like a movie that everybody raves about. You're like, I get why yeah. people like it, yeah. but it's just not for me. Yeah, it's like Woody Allen. I'm like, yeah. I just don't. It just doesn't click for me, dude. Dude, the, I think the best comparison I can make is you ever go down the Alpine slide in the Poconos? No. It's just like this slide where you sit on like a little a little cart and you slide down when it's not ski season. But uh, it's, it's like, like the- it can be fun. But it's like I want it. I want it slippery. Baby. Yeah, I want to get slippery. Yeah. <laughs> I want to get wet. I don't yeah. want to have to make it wet. Yep. You got a hose out there, hose in yeah. the goddamn slide. You're talking about like the mini roller coaster thing, right? With like no, the dude. Handbrake. It's like a uh, the thing that I sat on was like it had it was like a seat with little handlebars on the side, and you sit crisscross applesauce and you ride down like this wooden slide called the Alpine Slide. Damn. And I I guess it's fun. I guess people can have fun doing it, but it's probably tight if you're like nine. Yeah. <laughs> and once once you get past that, are you a ride guy? Do you like amusement rides? I do, man. I'm, I love amusement I'm rides, a dude. Fat retard, man. Yeah. But retarded guy. My retarded sister will not go near a ride. What? Won't go near she hates them. She's a big, big on safety. She wants some tootsies on the ground at well, all times. Just <laughs> knowing from what you tell me that she likes, like, she's a bad bitch. She likes when she likes and she doesn't oh, yeah. want to try like, anything. I want soda, no ice. Yeah. <laughs> and I oh, want some man. goddamn chicken fingers, dude. Queen. Yeah, she rocks. She just called me. I called my uh, my dad called me this morning and I called him back and she asked for the phone and she was like, you just interrupted me telling him something. <laughs> <laughs> She's such a fucking bitch. It rocks. If I could get her to sit still for 20 minutes, I'd have her in here. Oh You'll God, have your dude. mind blown. She'll just start. Dude, she, she's so like, I don't know. I'll have like every time I brought a new girlfriend in my house, she'll call them my ex's name on purpose. That's she'll be like, what happened? To, I dated two back to back Brits. I dated a brunette and a blonde. And she was like, whatever happened to brunette Brittany? She uh, dead? Do you think she misses me? <laughs> <laughs> We're like in a friendly. I'm like, I'm trying to get pussy here. You retarded. Kill I mean, me. in her defense, brunette Brittany does sound like a dead girl. Oh, dude. I wish she was. <laughs> <laughs> she will be one day. Dude. <laughs> yeah. God, I, I just got to hold out. Yeah. She She's said, vegan. does she miss me? Was she talking about like miss her? Or no, you? Yeah, no, she was saying like miss me. She knows they hate me. That's um, amazing. <laughs> yeah, She'll yeah. be dead soon. You never yeah. hear of an old Brittany. Yeah, you really don't. You never, re- I mean, there's no old, yeah, I don't know. It's like, yeah, Britney never died of natural causes. Britney died of a benzo overdose. Yeah, or a boyfriend assault. Yeah, Some, something's oh, going to yeah. happen. She doesn't deserve peace. My mom's still friends. <laughs> <laughs> My mom's still friends with her mom. Uh, how Dude, do you feel crazy. about that? I don't really care. Her mom's cool. The mom's cool. But uh, yeah, she was just not nice. I was cheating on her pretty habitually, yeah. so that might have added That'll to, do it, man. Yeah, the, women do not like that. <laughs> not, not a fan. But I was a young man with a band bun. So what can you do? Yeah, you can't. You're a fucking Ferrari, dude. Yeah, what can you do? Yeah, yeah you better learn how to drive stick. Yeah, and you got <laughs> you know a new tattoo now, man. Yeah, and I got a new tattoo. He shaved my whole goddamn leg, dude. Brutal. Are you mad at him for that? Nah, I don't care. I if he if we weren't such good friends, because okay. dude, last time I went to got a tattoo, I got my arm done, and I ate like I'm a big. When I bring my lunch to work, I just I just put it in a the, my like zip up fucking bag and mm. it sits in my truck and whatever temperature it reaches, that's what it is when I okay. eat it. And I think I ate a bad salad. <laughs> <laughs> my my girls got me eating salad, and uh, we yeah, it, I was like all my way there, and I'm like, dude, I don't feel right. Mm. <laughs> and then like twenty like maybe two hours into the tattoo, I was like, dude, I think I got a yak because oh, I'm like gosh. fidgety anyway when I get tattooed. I like have ADD, so I'm like move. I have to move. And yeah, dude, I had to drive home. I was puking. It was tough. Did you have to like sit there and persevere? Yeah, I let him finish. Damn, oh. I'm a gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> Just come on my back wife, and I'll dude. be out of yeah. here, dude. <laughs> yeah. I used to I used to work as an orderly in an operating room, 
Oh uh, yeah, you told me that. You like it, sh- you had it made sh- me think of like you, him shaving your leg all the way up made me think of that because <sighs> I used to shave pubes sometimes when like people would come in for hernia surgeries, <sighs> and I was always too too bashful to ask like where I should cut and where I shouldn't cut. So. You just- so I would just go fucking Eyebrows Edward down, brother. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's like you're coming in for a fucking dick bump removal, <laughs> yeah. but you're leaving with no you, eyebrows. You gave him like a wigger fade. Yeah. <laughs> you imagine this motherfucker walking in and he's like, I gotta shave your meat, dude. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Gotta go against the grain. You have to like bick it. Well, you start off with clippers, and then <sighs> when they get into the operating room, they would bick it in there. Oh, they bicked. Yeah, you would do the fade and God. Yeah. <laughs> Give them hooks. <laughs> <laughs> remember remember that haircut? People used to get the hooks. It would be like, remember when people used to get points? They would yeah. point their, and then in my, like in Northeast, everybody just hooked their eyes. Uh, like, I missed the hook era. Dude, brother. oh, you got to get back into it, dude. Yeah. God, wigger hairstyles. It's also, once the, like the blowout, the blowout, like there's a specific like Mayfair haircut and yeah. that hasn't left. Everybody in this neighborhood still has it. I mean, I talk enough about the wigger next door. He wears, he's a white guy in a poo shiesty. Okay. Dude, it's the, it's the greatest. He's yeah. out. That gets me thinking, and I've been thinking about this on my own recently, but there's so many different iterations of Wigger nowadays that I really it's think crazy. there should be some kind of like reference manual for it. There really should be. I it's mean, like a shit scale. Like you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> it's like Dude, how many G's you have in it. <laughs> everybody has like some form of, of Wigger phase, but I mean, on the low end, it's just like, like, yeah, I started wearing baggy shit one summer, but on the high end is like the 18 year old who's dating a 13 year old. Yeah, that that's elite. <laughs> First round draft pick wig. That's like you can't snap out of that because like most wigger phases are like fevers. Like you just got to wait for it to break. Yeah, you got to break the fever. But that's once what, you hit like 18 dating 13, like that's lifelong wigger. Yeah, it's over. Yeah, it's too. Uh, they, they do love it. It's young pussy for a wigger. <laughs> it's. it's and, and here's the thing about that, too. It's like like wiggers that are that age dating children. Like, I don't think they comprehend that it's wrong on top of that, too. It's like they don't get it. They'll still commemorate the yeah. pedophilic relationship with a Bonnie and Clyde teacher. Oh, absolutely. They have the same reading level. <laughs> <They're> <laughs> like, dude, she's cool. <laughs> like, she loves Looney Tunes. It's like, damn, girl, this pussy tight. Yeah, because she's fucking 12, dude. It's supposed to be. Oh, it's like God. so hard to loosen that. She likes the same soda as me. <laughs> you busting my balls. God. Dude, Wigger Love, though, is elite. I, I see so many like wigger love on the on Allegheny. You drive down there. Nobody's hornier than that first for like that first relationship you get. I know, dude. Dude, the greatest. I remember writing girls because you did you grow up and pass notes? No, dude. I never talked to girls. Oh my god, dude. I was a I was a I passed gas, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I, was I was just we were just talking about this last week. I remember when bon, like because I was in middle school and Columbine happened. So my school right after that started call, everybody would call them bomb threats. And when we got put on the back yard, like the the fields of our school, that was when we that was like chicks first got tits in like Ooh. seventh and eighth grade, and you're like, my god! So I just remember passing notes and be like, can I touch your tits yeah. on the walk? Would you get yeses? Just, huh? Yeses? Yeah, oh well, yeah, I got some yeah. yeses. Yeah, That's good, man. got some of the biggest tits in seventh grade. Yeah, I dude, think- I was always scared to talk to girls. There was one point where like I never felt worse. There was one day we were at recess and it was eighth grade, and all the boys were like just gathered around, just talking shit about like. The girl who was like, who would let anybody do anything. Yeah. It's this girl, Nancy. And uh, one dude's like, uh, damn, he's looking at me. He's like, I think you and Praveen are the only dudes in class that haven't hooked up with <laughs> the her. guy and Praveen? <laughs> yeah, me and Praveen were the only ones that weren't getting Nancy's cheeks, dude. At that point, I was like, dude, I if I knew of you could shoot up a school, I would have. <laughs> I would have. If I could get my hands on a gun. <laughs> dude, no doubt, man. Damn. Nancy's definitely a hoe name. Yeah. Brother, I, never, I don't think I ever knew a ha- Nancy. She, uh. I saw somebody tag her in something on Facebook a few years ago, and like she became like like a chemist or a physicist or something, God, which is like some of them sluts will develop a into massive geniuses. turnaround for like a an eighth grade wigger cum dumpster. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know some smart sluts. Some of them are they're low key. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes. Low key slut. <laughs> sometimes. I think once you get enough dick, you're like, all right, I have to learn some stuff. <laughs> it's, it's time to make my own money. Or it's like the dude you're fucking has some like. Some wild shit on the TV. You're just like, hmm, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's actually because yeah, you would, you always fuck to like the weirdest stuff. Like MythBusters is always mm, on. Yeah, all I dude, all I watch is true crime documentary. That's like it. Yeah, if you're fucking me, you're listening to Palm Stars. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Palm Stars ain't bad. Best I could do yeah. is that on your back. Yeah, <laughs> you're, you're not gonna in. learn anything that's gonna benefit benefit you. You're gonna learn who Chumley is <laughs> and fucking American Pickers and God, American Pickers rocks too. Dude, the one guy they kicked off the show for pills. 
What? Come on, dude. Yeah, I know. You should get a raise. I know. <laughs> it's America's Pickers. Like, what do you think this is? The thing America that, Perkers. <laughs> Come on, baby. The thing that kills me is when they have like a random ass expert on something. They're like, oh, we have our antique billboard export on the line. Face, dude. <laughs> He's telling us your billboard is worth 15 bucks. God. Dude, American Pickers would be so much better if they left the pill head on there because it's like the one guy's legit like trying to buy stuff. But then the pillhead's like sneaking off and just like <laughs> just, sneaking out with Coke signs. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, my bad. I just thought you guys were throwing this out. God, I love a good sign. I want $300. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah, do you, you guys take Coinstar? If you can just drive me to fucking dude, Coinstar, dude. Coinstar. Have you used Coinstar in a while? No, I think that's like, <laughs> to me, like, that's like a threshold that's separating me from my old life. Yeah. And I don't think no, things haven't gotten dire enough for me to go back there. Praise Allah. Dude, Coinstar, it, it was the fucking worst. Like, I would go there so often for one thing. And on top of that, too, it's so fucking loud. And dude, it's at the front it, of the fucking dude, store. Coinstar, using Coinstar is like the tarn feathering of like this. Dude, that's <laughs> this, a great like comparison. the last 30 dude. years. Because everybody, you have to, and then you're always, you always see someone you know. Yep. And you got to be like, oh, I just wanted like spending money for vacation. It's brutal, dude. There's no good excuse. But there's also no good, like, how do you get rid of change? You gotta you gotta go buy buy the rolls and then turn it into the fucking bank. What are you, you have autistic? To, like, but I mean, it's like yeah, the clearest <laughs> cut throw path to getting your money <laughs> is to put it in a coin star. But it's <sighs> like it's super loud. Like why not just make it like a fucking like, NFL replay booth <laughs> where yeah, they put a, a yeah. thing over your head so nobody knows who's <laughs> in there. You should do. Yeah. Just walk into Pooh <laughs> like, just a six five guy with a Pooh on. You're like ah, I gotta. Dude, it is so fucking loud. It's, it's like it feels like they ant- like it feels like there's speakers in it. Dude, that it sounds like dude. dude. The Coinstar machine is like, like two black ladies accident. arguing. <laughs> Everybody's on speaker. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean you can't return that? It's, dude, it kills me. Yeah, that's eight point nine cents <laughs> on the dollar. Yup, you heard me. <laughs> what you mean? It's a sock of jewelry, boy. What your nut ass? God damn. And what then you it- expect me to do with that Canadian penny? And every time I do it, there's always like washers and shit and like screws from work. Oh god, yeah. So then it's like spitting out the rejects at you, dude. Have you ever? gotten more than you knew you had oh my god it's the best feeling ever it's I, the you're like one this t- is 30 bucks that is also wiggers are so good at looking at change and being like yeah. that's like dude, three, <laughs> some, three two liters dude <laughs> they're like rain man with change dude i was a uh, my biggest coin star error was probably 2007 <laughs> to 2000 just got your prime dude i was hit my, my prime. shoulders were what they were <laughs> brother i would uh I would pay for 40s with them because that was my thing. It's like I, I would make maybe a thousand bucks every two weeks. And like I had a wife and three kids and it's like there was never any money. And yeah. I w- it was always just like I wanted to drink every night and I still reserve a, bo- a fucking 40 still reserve would be like 250. So yeah. it'd be like just crawling around the apartment looking for quarters. Looking under and shit. And find when it's like, oh, my God, dude, <laughs> life is the best. Dude. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, that was the fucking toughest. We got lucky because I remember when we were drinking 40s, we had a boy that worked at a pizza shop that had beer. Mm. So he would just fill them up with, he would fill them up in a trash bag and then put them in a dumpster. And we had a, we, we literally had a, a, a friend that was like 29 years old when we were in high school. And his name was literally Uncle Tom, white guy. Yeah. <laughs> but he rocked. Just drinking in my friend's backyard until everybody passed out. But yeah, th- that was the times, dude. Were you like a baseball field drinker when you were a kid? No, I started drinking when I was 16, and I was, like, strictly a house drinker. Like, dude, I've always had, like, insane anxiety, so I was never in the outside drinking because I was just so paranoid about... Somebody was calm. Anything and everything. I, was yeah. just, I don't even know what I was scared of, but it was mostly just, like, basement parties, people's houses, and, uh, yeah, just... The cool basement. parents <laughs> that whose kids are all dead now? Uh, dude, Usually. for the most part, I remember, like, one mom, she threw down a note down the stairs one time. Cause like she would let us drink, and like we would always just get like a, con- a bunch of a bunch a bunch of <laughs> cases of Bud Ice and a couple cases of Zima for the chicks. Yeah. And then Damn, Zima. One day, like forever. somebody somebody brought aftershock, and she could and she must have heard somebody saying like, "Whoa, what is that?" And uh, at one point, we're all standing like we're sitting around this kid's like basement bedroom. We hear the door open, and a crumpled up note flies down the <laughs> steps, and we're just like, "What the fuck is this?" Yeah. So one of us went over, opened it up. And it was addressed to the guy whose basement it was, Tim. Get that black said, guy out of here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't mind you guys doing heroin, but I cannot on, have them man. in my house. But, dude, she's like, I don't mind you guys drinking, but I don't want uh, hard liquor. or binge, Hard liquor, binge drinking. That's a st- I mean, that's a good rule, I guess. But still, it's like, if you're going to let it in, let yeah, it in, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you, can't, like, you can't go nitpicking at that yeah, point. Yeah, you got to let us fly at that point. That's so funny. I didn't really get into liquor until college. We were like mad. We did Mad Dog. And then uh, remember the dude? That vodka? No. It was a, I think it was three olives, but there was a flavor called the dude that was like Mountain Dew colored. 
And oh, the boys no. went buck wild on that shit, dude. What was your college liquor, Mike? Tequila and Jaeger. Oh, yeah. Ooh, Jaeger. yeah I had a strong ones, yeah. Jaeger phase. When I turned 21, we drank. My stepdad puked. My cousin puked. Everybody was puking on the Jaeger. It was kind of the I best. I love some Jaeger. Because, like, no one liked those things. Mm. So I had, like, one so friend, and we just had. Yeah, exactly. That's the move. We could keep it going for, like, a month with, like, two God. bottles. That was the best. I had so many friends that lost their virginity, like, in the woods. <laughs> my my one of the two one of my best friends he got caught like banging a poorly lady but oh, he had no. i remember somebody had like flashlighted him and he was i'll never forget like this him pulling up jenko jeans <laughs> <laughs> i was like that fucking rules dude we yeah, that, well that's the best part about like if you're gonna fuck in the woods you might as well fuck a fat girl because yeah, they're gotta, gonna get hurt <laughs> yeah, somebody's like, gonna she's gonna take it for everybody <laughs> she's gonna get a twig in the uh, oblique <laughs> you can't have a skinny broad out there i think we talked about fucking in the woods before but yeah. there was like a bonfire party that always happened at this one guy's house and my sister's best friend used to go to it my sister would never go she wasn't in the parties and then i'd get my dick sucked in the woods oh, <laughs> nice. it was great every time damn feel yep. like a, you're on a wilderness retreat getting sucked it, me and me and her i was about to say her name me and her <laughs> would just uh disappear and then we'd come back and everyone would be like ah oh, damn they would gas oh, just off God, into the man. wander off into the woods that'd be so i wonder how many kids have died like that <laughs> just getting lost off the interstate that's a good monster man yeah that is not bad <laughs> <laughs> the blowjob monster. Yeah. But he is nice, though, because he actually does suck you off. Yeah, yeah, you. that's not bad. <laughs> brutal teeth. Speaking of teeth, did you watch our bare knuckle fights this weekend? I did, man. Uh, that dude, beautiful Luke Rockhold. I'm like, brother, what are you so doing? Hot. I know. He's, he's, he's 38, and he's still doing just this. Just bang. Just yeah. bang bitches. I'll never forget when he got kicked off. Did you ever see when he was on Millionaire Matchmaker? No. Dude, he went on Millionaire Matchmaker. <laughs> Look up. There's a clip. Of uh, he gets kicked off, and the one lady he's dating, he was like, "Well, the date was like okay until uh, he got a little unprofessional." And they cut to the clip, and she's on the front of a boat, and he walks over and grabs her ass. He's like, "Do you spit or swallow, Carolyn?" Jesus, <laughs> like, dude, right the, dude, it's so funny. And then he, she calls him in to fire him, and he's like rubbing her assistant's back. She's like, <laughs> the, "I'm like, dude, you can't let it. You got a fox in the hen house, dude. He's a professional fighter, and he's like the hottest guy. You ever see Luke Rockhold?" I don't know the names of any of the bare Dude, knuckle fighters. He's a model, man. He's it's crazy. But Legit I did, I do watch it. I like yeah, bare knuckle. Pissed because my girlfriend found his Instagram, and now every time uh, I look no. over, I'm like, okay, yeah. all right, man. <laughs> There's a kid Take I was friends with in high school. His name's Nick Vespi, and he shoots for bare knuckle. He'll be on the sidelines. Like you've probably seen him. Oh he's got, shit! Like, a nice beard, black hair, slick well, back. I'm not gay, Mike. Hey. I'll have a look. No, but it's cool. <laughs> it's cool seeing someone you know on TV, yeah, yeah, yeah. especially yeah, something that is you know Dude, fun to watch. Because he he fought Mike Perry, who's I mean. Supreme Wigger. I mean, Mount Rushmore Wigger, yeah, arguably, no at this doubt. point. Dude, he's he brought, unbelievable. Do you remember when he brought his pregnant girlfriend as his corner as his man? Corner, a, a Spanish girl. That's a, a Wigger wedding. <laughs> he has a Latina girlfriend. Dude, I'll never forget, he came out to, a, somebody just shared the clip today, he was supposed to come out to the Halo, the video game music, and they put on Halo by Beyonce, and, uh, and he dude. just went with it, and he's singing it, and goes and fucks <laughs> some guy up. <laughs> When he won his first UFC fight, I remember they were like interviewing him on uh, like Arrow Hawani, and he just pulled it. He cashed the check and just had the wad on him at oh, all yeah. times. Dude, he was the best. Do you think he's going to fight McGregor? I don't think so. I, I can't see them paying him enough. I can't see them paying McGregor enough to fight. I hope knuckle. so, man. I mean, for a lot of different I'd love reasons, to see it. Like, they're both profoundly Adams. retarded. Oh, my God. But, like, McGregor is... He's a weird sleeper, too. He is. Dude, He's a he sleeper wigger. You get a gorilla he, tattooed on your chest, yeah. you might be the guy. McGregor is who every wigger thinks he is. And Mike Perry, who is who every wigger actually is. Yeah, actually is. And like, if you match them up, McGregor is the ultimate shit talker. And he's the reason why everybody talks yeah, shit now. Yeah, he's so funny. And Mike Perry talks like he just got out of a car accident. Yeah, he talks shit like he's at a bus stop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's like, he's so powerful. It's the best. Tyron Woodley gave him the N-word pass, remember? I do, yeah. He, he came up with a clip and he's like, hi, I'm Mike Perry and I'm starting a foundation for uh, bitch-ass N-words who can't fight no more and should hang it up. <laughs> I don't know if this so is true if I'm, or if I'm just thinking it. Like, isn't he part black? I don't know. I think they. I think he said that just and then it came out he it. wasn't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's like, dude, I don't know that that he's the kind of guy he would fight you anywhere. Yeah. He's yeah, he's out of he knocked out an old guy at like in a the restaurant Olive or Garden yeah. or some yeah. shit. <laughs> he's about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you if you have your Latina girlfriend in your corner, you're like that guy doesn't give a fuck yeah. about anything. He will die in a murder suicide. I could see him killing somebody. Yeah, that's Wigger's natural causes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And justified. <laughs> God, yeah, he's the fucking man though, dude. I love anybody. He, you get your nickname tattooed above your eyebrow. You can't get more powerful than that. That is sick, dude. I think that I think like the benchmark for for me falling in love with a MMA fighter is like if there's video of you street fighting in your late thirties. Oh yeah, like, and the guy I'm, is thirty I'm, years I'm older than you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like that guy could do no wrong in my eyes. Yeah, 
Can't do any. That guy just had Crocs in 4x4 mode. Yeah, this is a real pervert's paradise. Dude, it's out of control. Speaking of, I did a show, I did a show at a strip dancing, uh, strip, what do they call it? Like the, you know the fitness classes they do for like moms, but it's a stripping place? Spin like class? St- no, like a stripping pole. I don't it's know like pole dancing studios. Is. You know what I'm talking about? And the lady who, like the lady who owned it had like a fitted on and then she had a black boyfriend who had Crocs on him 4x4. Four four. I was like, this guy destroys you <laughs> like, was like, she was just like a definitely like an older she looked like a florida lady but i was like dude you're just living your dream it was in yeah. like an office complex and then the one studio was the strip pole studio and then there was like regular businesses i'm like these guys are there's gonna be a rape <laughs> this, <laughs> like, this, you got some accountant pounding keys and then you see some fucking thick mom coming out of this pole dancing class the pheromones and they're gonna be, they gotta have like fucking fans to get the air out of there. Did you get to watch one of the classes? No, I was dying to. Mm-hmm. There were so many poles. There was like twenty poles, but it was a nightmare because there was a mirror, and then you were on stage with the poles behind you, and then you're looking at a mirror of yourself doing stand up. And I was yeah. like, this is I wanted to kill myself. But. Is that the strangest place you've done stand up? <sighs> no, we aside did. from somebody's living room. <laughs> yeah, I've done living rooms. <laughs> I did Brandon Graham's dining room before. Um, no, we did, where did I, I did, um, did you ever do the boat? The, they have that, they had the boat on the Delaware with Con, the Brooke brothers. I haven't. Is it the, the Mooshaloo? No, it was the, no, it was like a, the Franklin, I forget what it's called. It's like literally like a booze cruise boat no, <laughs> and haven't. they would have shows on there. We did that. I did, a. I I was just, I just had one in my head. Where's the weirdest one you did? Um, I did like a children's birthday party <laughs> accidentally in, in <laughs> Mayo, New Jersey. And uh, yeah, it was like it was like Wop a stronghold, brother. It was like <laughs> two in the afternoon, and they were having a children's birthday party at this bar in Bayonne. Oh my god! And me and my buddy Eric Todd got hired to like Eric perform Todd's there. a maniac, He's the funniest. dude. He is out of control. Oh, to that point, like a guy's like one guy was like heckling and like he was busting my balls, but he was, he really fucking hated Eric. <laughs> and Eric started talking shit back to him, and this guy's like, "Let's see if you make it out of this bar alive." And then Eric got done, and we're finishing our drinks. He's like, I just want to let you know, if you see me drop down to my knees to pray, <laughs> it's only because I'm getting ready to fucking sock this guy in the balls. <laughs> He's a wild motherfucker, He's dude. He's the best, dude. I, uh, dude, we did, we did, uh, somebody hit me up to do a beef and beer, and I brought, like, three people up to do it, and we get there, and it was a memorial for a guy who overdosed. Dude, there's, like, Ooh. I mean, 50 kids running around, and we were like, dude, we're gonna, they were like, nah, just do it, just don't bring up drugs. I'm like, okay. And we're doing like Peggy O'Leary was on stage and some little kid came up and like punched her in the pussy. <laughs> she was like mid set. I was like, this is right, worth it. It's <laughs> worth it. Dude, we, um, uh, there's I, a lot of nightmares, dude. Hey, what's like, up, Kitty? Uh, that's a, uh, <laughs> all right, that's disconcerting. <laughs> <laughs> that was dead, dead Britney spirit. Dude, there was one other gig that was like, it was a great gig, but it was like totally like insane looking back at it. Like, like me and a couple other guys, we got booked to do like a memorial show for a kid that OD'd and his dad was a Coke dealer. And we did it and it was a great show. He pay you and Coke? Uh yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, I still feel bad about this, but like that night Oh my god. I was like getting Coke off of him and I was like I still felt bad because I'm yeah. a human being. Yeah. And I was like, uh I had I'd gotten tickets. The Phillies were playing the Texas Rangers the following weekend. And I was like, Would you want to go to a Phillies game? And he's like, I haven't been to a Phillies game in like 20 years. I was like, you're going to be my guest next weekend. Oh, hell dude. yeah. Dude, and he he was just giving me bags of fucking Coke. And was it I, a Phillies game? I took his number down, and uh, I had like a massive fucking come down off of this Coke. Oh. And it was like, it's normally like two, three days of depression for me. Yeah, same. And, uh, like I, a refractory period. <laughs> yeah. And dude, he, he was hitting me up. Hey, are we still going to the game? It was like, I ghosted him. Oof. So this poor Coke dealer, if you're, if you're out there. <laughs> I'm so sorry, dude. <laughs> I'll send you tickets, but I'm not going to the fucking game with you. I'll but go with you. Bring I truly ball. regret not picking you up to go to that game, but I Damn. know what that would have been. I know it would have been electric. I know, man. God. Dude, he was the man. God damn, Coke dealers, some Coke dealers rock. You might not have made it out of the game. Yeah, I know, dude. That's how I want to go, though, Mike. <laughs> dude, that's what we did. We did a show in Elkton, Maryland. You ever hear that? Yeah. My buddy Dan Madden, apparently it's a KKK stronghold. Oh. I didn't know about that. And we get there, and the guy who ran the bar was a former bare knuckle boxing champion who had transitioned into being a lady. He was the gnarliest looking. We got there and somebody was like drinking a beer in the parking lot and threw it. And he saw it. He's like, motherfucker, don't come in. And we're like, oh, we're here for the comedy show. Dude, it was the a petrifying bar. Like we're in there talking shit and uh like dude, so many like drunk Vietnam vets talking about killing people. And mm-hmm. then the, you see people roll up their sleeves and they got bolts tattooed on their arms. <laughs> 
And then uh, the one lady was with the bolts tattoo on her arm was talking to a black lady. We were like, hey, she's like, hey, well, I'm not that kind of Nazi. <laughs> it was fucking, it's wild. A weird one. And then we went to my buddy's house and lit his Christmas tree on fire. <laughs> we had a bonfire. <laughs> it was like January. It was a good, beautiful time. That yeah. was great for the bonfire parties. We always threw a Christmas tree on top yeah, of it. Yeah, them things will set Yeah, it is nice. Like Christmas time, like like white supremacists will set trees on fire. <laughs> yeah. Set across this man. It yeah. is Save something sweet about them. <laughs> yeah, it is beautiful. They do have kind of a heart. <laughs> yeah, those were the, the most fun gigs I remember with comedy is shit like that. And it's like most times it would end up in surprise drugs. Always. And you'd end up in some somebody's kitchen that you could have never foreseen yourself being. And Making it was just, planes you're never going <laughs> to Yeah, it's like, give up with like every idea. Like, we it should was hang like, out. Yeah, dude, <laughs> every fucking night in a weirdo's kitchen is like Shark Tank. Yeah, every it's time. It's like, dude, th- we're going to be Here millionaires. Like, there's no way this will not <laughs> fit. This not will be cell phone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, remote control <laughs> flashlight. Most retarded every fucking time. And then, you, yeah, you got your... Fr- it's been getting weird. Yeah, I haven't done it in a bit, but... Y- when you get like I don't know, it gets odd because when you have, you have like some friends whose like life's going poorly, and then you start talking guy, to certain yeah. people, and you're like, ah, oh, yeah, this is. Well, I'm gonna go fuck. I'll talk, <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk to you. Yeah, when I, when I was when I was wilding couch, out, dude, brother. like I was that guy. So like the people I was around, like they're people who could afford to be doing coke against. Like they're single. Yeah, they're they're, they're just relegated the, to like the what income. they're doing. Yeah. yeah, and it's like I was just a guy who was just. You know, I might spend like, you know, 120 like bucks and it was just like, all right, who else? Who's going to whip my beak? <laughs> Dude, one of the funnest times was like this one guy who I just happened to come across. He was a friend of a friend. He was blacked out and he uh, he called up for more Coke. He got like uh, he got like uh, three forty bags of Coke delivered and he was passed out. He went out to get it and he just put it on the counter and he went to bed. And it was me and my friend were just like, no, all right, we're going to do this. It. And he's never going to remember that he got yeah. this. And he did it and he didn't remember. Yeah. That's yeah. the best. That's nice. I know, man. I took the Coke Ferry, baby. You didn't leave him any? No. <laughs> no that's <laughs> probably Nobody the safest leaves. bet. Yeah, yeah. I was looking out for him. Yeah. Yeah. Those are friends. Yeah. It's like, I, I don't, I do not understand those people who can do Coke and then be like, all right, I'm calling it. I'm like, what's still? You're insane. You got to chip some of that rock off, chief. There was, I mean, one of the last times that I did it, I was at a friend's house. And again, it was a surprise Coke night. And he's like, all right, I'm going to bed. And him and his wife went up to bed. And there was, we were splitting an eight ball and there was still a ton left. And I was like, I know. Morally, I should leave some of this behind. Yeah, but but realistically, I don't know yeah. that I can. And I, the <laughs> I'm living end, in the now. <laughs> yeah, I I think I left a little bit, but I took most of it, and I knew I had to get out of there because uh, their roommate was coming home soon. It would have just been too weird to yeah. meet a new person at like six. Hey, I, I'm cool. It's cool. I'm here. Yeah. The, once the sun like the sun starts was coming up, you're like ah, bummer city, dude. blinding, dude. And there was uh, I called a friend who lived close. I feel like by. you're melting. <laughs> you're like, it's it's ah. the absolute worst. And I called a friend who lived in South Philly. Like, this was in South Philly, too. Yeah. And I was like, Mike, can I come chill at your place? Because I knew he lived relatively close by. Yeah. He's like, my house is being remodeled. Like, I was like. Perfect. I, he, I was like, dude, I just need to come over. He's like, Mike, you don't understand. Like, I don't have any walls. I was like, dude, I just need a structure. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> is there a roof? Yeah, there <laughs> was. <laughs> and, dude, I was just sitting in his bathroom with, with the fucking wiring exposed, just just fucking beams exposed, just like just staring like, at my phone watching porn oh. until it was time to get out of there. <laughs> Squeezing the base. <laughs> <laughs> get it done. Dude, that's the best. Home remodeling partying is the best. We were at, we were drinking one time when we were like probably 20, 21, and uh, we got back to this chick's house and their parents were redoing the bathroom upstairs and a girl had been fucked up and slept on the couch and got up in the middle of the night to piss and piss through like where the toilet was and pissed all over the living room floor. Like just must have just squatted up against the wall and poured that piss straight down to the living room, dude. Mm. Because everybody was like hearing noise. We're like, what the fuck is that? Walk down the living room. (laughs) There's just like a waterfall of piss coming. A bunch of Budweiser. (laughs) Yeah, I'm like, don't waste it, baby. Come on. God damn. She ruled. She fell asleep on my, uh, my parents had like a lounge chair in the backyard and she fell asleep on that. And I guess she left her underwear on the thing and my stepdad drove her home and her stepdad was like on like in the driveway when he dropped her off he's like don't worry she was at my house and then he was like dude i drove away like wait (laughs) like he realized (laughs) what he just acted like he was porking this poor girl (laughs) absolutely insane dude my family is your whole family retarded (laughs) retarded yeah i'm the only like try to degenerate like dude I, i don't know that i've seen my dad drink like more than twice really and like no no uncles that are fucked up and it's like i i really picked up the fucking drug and alcohol cross for everybody yeah so i mean somebody's got to carry the torch yeah. <laughs> you got a broad back baby <laughs> god damn but you come from degenerates uh, i got a lot of i got like heroin addict brothers happy birthday in heaven <laughs> they're done and then uh i got like my i mean my whole family booze hounds mm-hmm. everybody's a booze hound but not that many drug people that i know about people will dabble but yeah. like i've had some pill ants i got a pill ant yeah. she's in heaven 
But uh, yeah, dude, there's a lot of it's. Uh, my family's mostly it's like white trash, like fighting at like family events. There's always like a wrestling match at Christmas. Mm. There's uh, my cousins. We got in a fight on um, me and my cousins got in a fist fight out front of a police station on my aunt's fortieth, and then on her fiftieth, they got into a fight with it. Some dude came after my uncle with a pool cue. And uh, they were outside beating the shit. My cousin was fucking this dude up, and my uncle was so hammered, he didn't think it was him and fish hooked his own nephew. <laughs> <laughs> my, poor, my poor cousin Mikey getting fish hooked. Yeah, there's a lot of that in my family. But uh, yeah, no, mostly like my brother and my little brother is kind of, he's like a dorkier guy. So he drinks, but dude, he drinks like, he'll drink like vodka with Pedialyte, like hydrating. He's that kind of guy, like yeah. plans ahead, engineering kid. You know what I mean? Video Smart game fella. man. Yeah, my little sister, she's a booze hound. Everybody's chilling. Dude, my sister was moving out of her apartment yesterday, and my mom called me, and my mom's, like, spazzing. She's like, you need to get over to Chaley's right now. I need you to fuck this dude up, because I guess my mom got out of the car and dropped something, and some guy was backing into a spot, and I guess they got in a fight, and my stepdad gets out. He's 60 years old, 62 years old, gets out of the car and starts yelling at this dude, and dude hit him, <laughs> like a twenty, like a 27-year-old dude. Punched him? Yeah, like, drilled him, dropped him. And I was, uh, it was so funny because he was like pissed, but he was more embarrassed. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you can't never talk shit. You got dropped by a guy in a fucking Kia, <laughs> you pussy. <laughs> what did but he, he say? He's I don't know. You get like, I got my mom's Italian version. Yeah. And then I got my stepdad's version. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to look into it. Yeah. <laughs> Launch an investigation. And go ask the 20 year old. Yeah. But the dude, the dumbass dude, like the security guy at the front desk of my sister's building gave me the dude's name. <laughs> so we're like, hey, you're fucked, dude. Oh man. But dude, it's just. Did you look yeah. him up on Facebook yet? Yeah. <laughs> of course. Yeah. I'm a psycho. I told you, remember, did you came to that Frankfurt Hall show? Yeah. Yeah, I did that, and uh, I was talking shit. There was, like, a professor with a group of kids at the next one, the last one we just did, and they wouldn't shut the fuck up. And I was like, dude, shut up. He wouldn't shut up, and uh, I was like, I, I was like, I get you're trying to fuck one of these kids before you go bald. Like, I know it's it's over. Like, I kept fuck because they wouldn't shut up. And the dude emailed the restaurant that ran the show and got uh, me fired. And then I went, uh, <laughs> dude, fucking dildo. pussy. But I went on, I went online and like looked through the whole staff photo of the college I went to and found the motherfucker. Yeah. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm gonna have to put up some interesting posters uh, of this guy. I gotta look into the legality of that. I think I you're hate, good. Yeah, I, I think I'll be all right. Yeah. You can't get me fired. I can horse around, mm -hmm. dude. It's free conch. <laughs> what are you gonna do? <laughs> you ever have anybody fuck with you like that? Like get uh, you fired from somewhere? I'm trying to think. Like, I was a part of a show where a lady did that last year in Baltimore. Oh, was you a were part of Tin Can. We got fired for that. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, too, maybe I'm the fucking curse, man. I got the black hats running past now. Yeah. Don't ever have me over again, I forget dude. Go. Yeah, we got fired from that because they were like, somebody on stage did something racist and homophobic. I was like, homophobic, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing racist. Yeah, they got fired. They're running a new show there now. Management. Yeah, we'll have to ruin that. Yeah, I'll, I'll go over there and fucking start some crap. I'd like to, man. Yeah, because the food was delicious. That's what pissed me off. Because I'm like, I like the food. I love mm. a good popcorn chicken. Ooh, I'm a huge baby. popcorn chicken. Look, another pair of insane yeah, footwear, dude. Back, I swear buddy. to God. Even that cat had good paws. Yeah, beautiful paws. I'd suck them clean, baby. How many cats you have? You're a cat, man. I got two, man. It's so hard because, like, I love cats so much, and, like, I follow all these, like, fucked up cat groups. What do you mean? It'll be, like, you know, cats that are just like, look, if you don't, if somebody doesn't come adopt this motherfucker in the next week, we're putting him down. Oh. And it's like, you I don't. You would have a thousand cats if you had the. I would, man. If, yeah. if I had space and it's like. It's already too much. Like, you know, I love the two cats we got now, but, you know, I got a big heart, Ryan. <laughs> I know you do. And I, I love the pussy, baby. <laughs> but, like, I follow all these fucking fucked up cat groups. And, like, I ended up, like, doubling down on all the groups I followed. Because when we went to Florida, we stayed Ooh, in an Airbnb. More stray cats down there. Oh, dude. It was, it was the warm like, weather. It was like we pulled into our Airbnb one night, and this sweet little gray cat came running up to us. And everybody's fucking like, like oh, God, we miss our cats so much. And we yeah. got to take care of this little guy. And I took Damn. care of him for two days. I actually bought a cage. At Target, and if he would have got in, I would have taken him to the place. Yeah. But he never got in, so I just left him a bunch of food, and uh, I followed all these fucking lost pet groups on Facebook for for Central Florida. Let's just see if you find him. Yeah, dude, you're a cat in Central Florida. That's like a homeless guy in Florida. You're <laughs> best weather possible. <laughs> <laughs> like you're living. You got lizards yeah. to eat. You got whatever. I just saw a homeless guy shitting right out right down the street from Helium the other day. Like a big guy, like mm -hmm. taking a shit, and you're just like. I, it's so funny. You're like, I live in Bangladesh now. <laughs> it's just like grown men shitting everywhere. I saw a guy shit uh, in Northern Liberties. Like he was just, it was like, I don't know what I was doing there. It was like early on a Sunday morning. It was like, I was taking a shit. I, saw I might have been, yeah. It's like, what are you doing here too? But like this guy was, I parked my car and this guy was just had his back against the wall and he was like squatting down. <laughs> doing was like, oh my God. Yeah. He was doing a wall, <laughs> wall to take a shit. Those dudes quads are crazy. Oh God. <laughs> 
Do you ever see those videos of dudes like in uh, India shitting and they're in the poverty squat? No. You ever see that like the full deep squat? You ever see like a like every time there's like like uh, all the Eastern European guys that eat lunch they squat okay. while they eat Makes hoagies. Sense. Yeah. It's put, that's why they got the squatty potty. It puts you in like the perfect shit posture. It does make you feel yeah, that. Sh- yeah. <laughs> that. I like yeah. that. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Like- yeah, they'll get they'll put their tootsies up there. They just imagine like harassing women online as <laughs> yeah, they're doing my that. God. Show tit now. Yeah. They got the I don't know why I went with that accent for an Indian guy. <laughs> Look, you they get, are the horniest guys. They are, man. I They're, love that older guys can't. They don't understand that like comments are for. Do they not understand? Or they don't care. I guess older Indian guys or just older guys. Just guys, <laughs> just people like guys who comment horny shit on other people's posts are my favorite. There, I mean, like especially like the older a man gets, the more he thinks his opinion is validated in comment sections. I read a guy today where um, the story was on ESPN about a WNBA coach named Becky Hammond who's being considered for the Toronto Raptors head coaching gig, yeah. which is a pretty oh. cool thing, and I hope yeah. she gets it. Yeah. But, like, one guy's like, dude, assistant coach maybe, but you hire her as head coach, you lose me as a fan. It's like, <laughs> we're going to miss you, dude. <laughs> yeah, it's like, see you, dude. Yeah. People are so retarded. Like, you think a professional sports league is worried about one fucking – but I I do wish I had some of that in me. It's got to be fun yeah. to be that guy. I mean, we were – Because you're like, I am the I'm the man. Yeah, it's like, but <laughs> – the Raptors need me. It's like, dude, they got Drake. They got Drizzy. They're going to be all right, dude. I mean, we were talking like before before we started recording about like how like you see certain comedians like on the internet like having confidence that you can never even yeah, dream like, of having. Fuck, give me and a it's like, sprinkle I, yeah, of that, just, dude. just some of that. I would love to have a piece of that Yeah, to, to feel validated in leaving a strong opinion on the internet, even yeah. though I used to do that constantly. Like from up until maybe, you know, Eight years ago, yeah. I was just like, this sucks. <laughs> this is, the people who publicly do it, and then you look at the people who do it, like, dude, you're a 40-year-old with three yeah. roommates. Just yeah. stop doing this. Yeah. You don't have, everybody does it like it's like they're calling. I'm like, clearly it's not, <laughs> dude. It's not working out. Yeah, I had it, and I lost it, man. I would give anything to have that back again. Yeah, you should be able to do it like that should be like, you're because you're a sober guy. So you should yeah. be able to do that for like that should be like your happy hour. You I got like, boozing. Yeah, <laughs> you get like two hours of hate yeah. every week. Dude, it was the best. I would just I would just sit at my computer in my bedroom every <laughs> night and just unload. F word, F word, N word, F word, C word. You name it, brother. That was when you Facebook was cool. It now, was fun, because dude, I've stopped posting on Facebook. I like jokingly threatened to beat up a group of teens, and yeah. then they were like. They banned me for that. <laughs> then I did something else. And I was like, I'm done. Yeah. This is just for seeing people in high school go through custody battles now. Bro, I almost missed it, too. I was like, I only got in the Facebook. I got convinced. I went, um, it was at the bar where the uh, the guy sold Coke, yeah. uh, ironically. But I saw a friend there, and he's like, dude, are you on Facebook yet? This was like 2007. I was like, nah, dude, it's kind of gay. He's like, dude, you got to get on gonna, there. It's I was like, electric. Mm, I don't know. Maybe I'll try it. And then it was just like. Whoa. Yeah, this is, yeah. Did it's you like, have uh, AIM or uh, MySpace at the time? I had MySpace, okay. yeah. Okay. And like MySpace, I liked a lot. I used that a lot. But then like when that faded, I was like, I don't really want to go to Facebook. Yeah. yeah. But this guy convinced me and it was just. You can't fucking put it down. Mike is one of the funniest of Facebook. Terror. When you post them old posts, that's like the funniest Thoroughly shit. Thoroughly retarded, man. Which is in his book, On Perks. Buy that shit. Yeah. If you go to oh, onperks.com, you can buy a copy of my book. And uh, yeah, every. I was bad posting like on booze, but like on perks took it to a whole new level. Some of the funniest shit you've ever read. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Because you were one of them guys I met that was so nice. It feels like you're pranking me. You're like, (laughs) this guy's fucking either retarded or gay. There's something. A combination of both. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, he's got something going on. I'm like, I think this guy's. I I thought I, I thought I brought my book. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I wrote a book called On Perks, which is a collection oh, yeah. of all the retarded perked up so Facebook funny, posts dude. I made, as well as like a current day analysis of each of those. posts. Put that in the bathroom. Put it on the coffee table, dude. It is. It's perfect it's for the bathroom. Dude, everything that I've ever written is best consumed on the toilet. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like if you have to take a shit like and you want to laugh on the toilet. Yeah, yeah I'm your He's guy. the shit, man. I'll never write anything that makes you think. I'll make my words are designed to make you shit. <laughs> it's awesome if you have a book is that your only you got one two you got i wrote two. three i wrote oh, three, three. Dude, oh, that's dude, amazing the, the, ironically the first two that i wrote i attribute me writing them entirely to perks because like perks like freed me of you, that you thing don't that have we that anxiety about. of like what do people think no it's like <laughs> that's me on like a lot I'm of caffeine man. or an adderall i'm like <laughs> i'm unstoppable <laughs> and then lunch hits and you're like delete that <laughs> yeah so they can be helpful i mean yeah. there i got i got a couple books well i got three books out of it because even though this one i wrote stone sober sober 
it was because I was whacked on purpose. It is for like, a bunch dude, because I when I posted about that, I had like dudes hit me up that I grew up with because I grew up in the Perk era, yeah. like Oxys and Perks. And dudes, like, what is that? I was like, oh, dude, you'll love this. <laughs> yeah, shit. And I read for the audiobook too. Yeah, dude, that and was it, the funniest shit. I was ever. about to ask you, do you have an audiobook? You read it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. dude, really? that's just one before. of the narrators. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking awesome. I, uh, so if you go to audio.onperks.com, you can buy the audiobook version. Of get this. that shit, dude. And it's Ryan and a bunch of my other yeah. boys. It's you know, Butter, Tim Butterly, McKeever, McCusker, Shaner. Tubbs, Mary Rodzinski, fucking David James, Chip Chantry. What a cool idea. Where did you gang. think of that? Getting like doing multiple people doing your readings. Less work for it me. It was a good idea. <laughs> it's a great well, idea. Like, yeah. You, he, you like read the quote and then Mike reads like basically like where your head was at. Yeah. yeah it is. It. It's like it'll read. You like, also have an amazing recount. <laughs> like your recall memory dude there's so much so much in here that i'll be like i remember exactly what i was doing that day yeah. but then there's other times where i'm just like i have no recollection because he'll that. be like the navy seals are the shit and then he's like bob barker's a fag yeah. <laughs> like, that's like the day-to-day like swing is like this raw you can, you can I, tell when the prescriptions ran that's out that's exactly it right yeah. it's like i can attribute like i can Cranky i know pants. exactly when like i had a full prescription where i'm just oh, like dude, dude i fucking love shine. pbs dude it's this neighborhood first and 15th you'll see wiggers skipping up and down oh it's the first baby <laughs> yeah, everybody checks drop. Is the book all like chronological or do you go like random? No, the only part that's chronological is like the first chapter because the reason why I got into perks, I was never a perk guy. Like I I had just I was committed to getting sober. Like two weeks prior to me getting whacked starting perks, I um had a bender in Atlantic City. True. And I went there on a whim. I had been drinking all day. They're gonna have one, dude. That, that was <laughs> the place, dude. And yeah. it was a, it, it was a perfect storm that's for getting Vegas, fucked up. Baby. <laughs> I'd been getting drunk all day. I was barbecuing. It was actually a nice day with my family. But then, you know, after like the twelfth beer, the wheels start turning. I'm yeah, just like, yeah, I should that. go to Atlantic City. Yeah. And I did go there and uh it was like I was like, All right, I've had all this beer and I'm already like I'm already gonna be in trouble when I get back home. Why not take it? Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna get some Coke. And it was like this cocaine angel just appeared. This fucking this this homeless dude on the bike, his name is RJ. And I was like, Yo, dude, can you get me some Coke? And that was my move. It's like the first yeah. black guy I would see, I would ask. <laughs> and Nine times out of ten, yeah, it, it would probably it work. Out. He took me to get... We went to like a Red Roof Inn or something. Like, I got Coke and he got cracked. Oh, my God. And I plowed through my fucking Coke. It's and, like the uh, Vatican for drugs. Red Roof It Inn really things. was, dude. <laughs> they got whatever you need, bro. And I don't know how I didn't get scammed that night, but this guy was like... He was a decent guy. And... I would plow through my Coke and he had some crack. He's like, well, do you want some of this? And like, I hadn't done crack yet. And I was yeah. like, yeah, all right. And I did it. And thankfully, I didn't like crack. But yeah. it was such a horrendous experience that like I went home. I was like, I'm giving up everything. But then two weeks later, I got hurt. And the doctor's like, yeah, Damn. you're fucked up. You need perks. God wanted you to be fucked up. I he feel that, that way book. too, man. Yeah, <laughs> You're Catholic. I do, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, yeah, that shit is crazy. When I had my surgery... They gave me like all this fucking painkiller medication. I was really scared to take it, so like I didn't. But yeah. like it was horrible. So my friend just baked me a bunch of edibles. That's not that's the move. Yep. Yeah, he gave dude. me a whole tray of edibles, and I just took like edibles. half of one in the morning and half one at night. I was yeah, chilling. edibles work for I don't know what the fuck. Somebody just threw a baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was definitely a child's carrier <laughs> that just got thrown down the street. Late term abortion on my goddamn sidewalk, dude. But like, yeah, that is definitely the move. And like, if anybody is like watching this, that's that's. In like a similar predicament, I would definitely recommend going the fucking weed route as yeah. opposed to this shit because this is just dude because insanity. Yeah. If I do if I do edibles, I get that. But if I smoke weed, I can feel like every pain in my body. Yeah, Are you ever like that? If I smoke, it's like I feel like I'm like, am I do I have like a torn fucking oblique or some shit? I just can't enjoy it. Like I I don't. I'm not a big smoker. Like I, I do like I have had edibles and like I like them like 10 milligram edibles. Are like uh, sweet that, I was about to me. say 10 milligram. I'm perfect. Yeah. My girl like my girl can get whacked on like 50. And I'm like, dude, I would be. I couldn't function. My, the I most can, I took was a 100. Dude, I can do I can do shrooms, coke and drink a bottle of fucking vodka and be fine. Yeah. But if, if I do an edible, I'm like, it's, this is not. <laughs> I feel like I yeah, feel like with the uh, I feel like with the weed smoking, a lot of people don't pay attention to the strain they're smoking. Oh, yeah, for sure. And so, I smoke so much fucking weed in my life that uh like i pay attention to like how it really feels when i smoke and i'll just like stay away from that you journal name. it yeah. dude see i forget yeah. <laughs> i'm like that's not good and then if someone hands me a joint i'm like i'm going to smoke tonight we just did uh weeding out the stoned i love that on, show, uh, man. dude it was so fun i did it with drew and, i saw him uh, rapping oh my god dude yeah. it was the fun because everybody it got to a point where like you uh basically the show's uh, however many com- comics on stage everybody smokes and one person doesn't and uh, they go through, and you had to sing 30 seconds of a song. And, like, me and Drew were towards the end of the line, so I'm like, what the fuck? 
Because you know what I mean? You're like 30 seconds of a song you could do with music. But if you had to do a cappella, you're like, what? I just did lot, Sweet yeah. Caroline. There were so many fat white people. I'm like, I'm about to crunch. <laughs> <laughs> the whole crowd going nuts. And then Drew put his hoodie up and I immediately knew what song mm-hmm. it was going to be. I feel like uh, to like fuck everybody up, they should have just made Drew the sober one. Because Drew smokes so Drew fucking looks, much. Yeah, they yeah. thought I was the sober one and I was fucking <laughs> flying. Mm-hmm. And uh, but there was like a there was a chubby guy next to me with a mustache and he got he got booted immediately and he was the sober guy. Ah, uh, poor bastard. But like rap, you know rap boy James Walls. Oh, I love him. Man. Yeah, he's so the funny. Best. He's so fucking funny. They uh, cause he got we smoked before we like me and Drew we smoked on the way up. And James got up there and he was like, I don't know if I can handle this. <laughs> and he got kicked off immediately. So he's just sitting <laughs> on the side eating danishes. Dude, he did an impression. I don't think it made it on like the episode of Digital Bazooka that we did. But I think it was like right before we started filming. But he was doing an impression of Obama calling people to make sure they're exercising. <laughs> and it was like a dead on Barack Obama. Yeah, impression. he's a funny motherfucker. He kills me. He's yeah, a he creepy really looking little up. bastard, too. Yeah, I like him a lot. I could see him killing hookers. I feel like yeah. prank calls never get old. Dude, they don't. He's crushing it. It's, it's a great shit. idea that they came up with that, because I'm like, I grew up with, like, Jerky Boys and shit. Yeah. And, like, CKY oh and Jackass. I'm like, how does nobody have another show like this? It's, like, the perfect show. You, you did it? I did it, like, a, a month ago. Yeah, and it was just, a blast, dude. dude. it's so fun. Yeah. You feel like a 13-year-old kid. Mm-hmm. Again, it's the and best. People were cool. Like, I, I just got lucky. Like, I think everybody that I ended up calling, you know, was in the mood to talk. Yeah, that's what, dude, because I called like a Home Depot in like Alabama and told them like my feet were stuck in concrete. And I had this guy, <laughs> I had this dude, it was like clearly a black dude. And you could tell he was just so happy it wasn't somebody bitching. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I'm like, you can't rent me a Bosch to drill my feet <laughs> out. He was having the best time ever. And I'm like, thank God. Because, yeah, if you call, because I think Drew just said he got like threatened by a taxidermist or some shit. Because <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you're going to run into people. He called like a, when we were doing it, he called, um, like a tarot card reader and said he found a piece of his aunt's skin. <laughs> and, he was like, and the lady was like, yeah, no, I can't do that. He's like, well, your business card was in the trash. So, <laughs> but it's like, then you're pissed. You got like <laughs> fucking full grown retards calling yeah. you at your business. <laughs> I'd be bent. Were you a prankster when you were a kid? Uh, I was a little bad boy for a while. Like I, when I got into jerky boys, like I started making prank calls and I enjoyed it so much that I would do it by myself. Like, it's always yeah, fun dude, with friends, the, yeah. but I love the game so much that, like, I went through a phase <laughs> of doing it by myself. Prank calls by yourself feel so yeah. sad. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, my boy's going to make it. Is your refrigerator running? <laughs> you better catch it. All right. Uh, yeah, yeah, let's go play video uh, games. <laughs> God. Yeah, dude. I was a big fire guy when I was a kid. Yeah. Huge into the pyros. Were you a piss- bed pisser, too? Yeah. I Dude, I did that. Killed animals. Oh, you're, you're, you're it. Man. I had all, yeah, <laughs> I had, a, dude, I thought I was going to be a serial killer for yeah. sure. You could get away with it. Yeah. <laughs> Just be like, come on, I didn't mean it. Fucking bust the mind balls. <laughs> I used to, dude, we used to light this field on, like, I used to light this little fire and I would piss on it and, and uh, put it out. And the one day we peed on it and I fucking hold, I had like a little ember and came back and burnt like two acres. And then my friend that I was best friends with got. He said he got a belly ache. Went home and told his dad. Uh, and got fucker. kicked out of all my ca- classes for the rest of my like the whole entire like the rest of like middle school, high school. I was a petty theft guy too. That's fun. Yeah, that's good stuff. Yeah, I got into stealing CDs for a while. Stealing CDs were the best until they started putting the little locks on there. That put got, the beepers that, on. That's what ended up doing me in. Is I used to go to I think it was Sam Goody in the Springfield Mall. And it had those like gigantic plastic things like on the end. Yeah. And I shoved a bunch down my pants. Damn. And uh, I got got. But I didn't get arrested or anything. They just. Yeah, I never got arrested. Yeah. We used to steal because they put a value city in my neighborhood. And um, we had like, remember the big starter pullover jackets? Yeah. We used to steal VCRs and throw them in the creek. <laughs> like we wouldn't even do anything with them. We would just go. <laughs> steal. <laughs> who could, who could yeah. There was an Arby's right there. Go down, throw them in the creek and then go get some fucking beef and cheddars, dude. The greatest. That was, yeah. yeah. But that's, I was big, that's real retard shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> For bowl, just bowl cuts, like, diamond study. It was $120 <laughs> in the crick. <laughs> well, dude, we, we're, I couldn't bring it home and <laughs> be like, mm. Mom, dude, we were talking about, because uh, we got, remember, remember you used to get them big screen TVs that were huge? Yeah. You had to like warm them up to watch them. That was the shit. One of our neighbors gave us one that had a cat in it. We didn't, there was a stray cat in the box because it was like one that you turned it on. And then you'd see the tubes light up while they warmed up, and there Dude, was a fucking cat in the box. How sick would that be if, like, you were getting high one night and, like, you put on a movie with the MGM intro, yeah, and, and the cat the- just ended up bursting out of the TV? <laughs> dude, that would have fucking yeah. Dude, I miss big screens. That's what I was talking about. Um, that was when you knew like a kid's dad had porn in the house that they had a fish tank. Yeah, that was the pinnacle. That was brother. like, dude, when, that stopped being like the white, like the white signal of opulence, a nice mm-hmm. fish tank. 
What ever had, happened to that? We had two gigantic fish tanks in our You're house. You're Italian, though. Eh. Yeah. <laughs> His dad owned like a bunch of used car dealerships. Oh, hell yeah, man. So you know. Yeah, he's a used car dealer. And I know you had a water feature in your yard. Yeah, we talked about that. Like yeah. That's <laughs> like the a biggest, waterfall. If you're walking by someone's house, you want to know if they're Italian. They got a fountain. Lucky. If, they're, if they're making 500K a year, there's yeah. a fountain somewhere Yeah, on this the guy property. definitely tongue kisses his mom. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Maron. <laughs> God damn. But, dude, what, and I'm going to be on. And then, Mike, you got your show at Helium next week. Yeah, next maybe. week. Ryan's doing it with me. Uh, yeah, yeah. Me, Ryan, it. Del Calo, Jake Matera, Maradzinski, uh, Tim Butterly, Ryan Shaner. That's a fun. I can't wait, man. So Hitters, baby. Yeah, I just want to have as many people as possible. Yeah, it'll be fun. That I love and then just help me in some capacity with my book. Come, hang, Come on the show, Buy a man. book. Download it. Listen to Dad Me. Yeah, Listen baby. to Little Stinkers. Thanks for coming on, Mikey. I appreciate you having oh, me. Oh, yeah, brother. baby. Always Anytime, nice, baby. You're the man. I'll see you guys next week. Bye, Mike. Bye.